to it today and go to our first guest, who's the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Governor, good morning. How are you, sir? I'm good, Hoppy. How are you doing today? I'm fine. I'm fine. The question is, how are you? You know, you... You, you have run a lot of businesses. You've been around a long time. You've done a lot of stuff. This is, uh, come on now, this is a tough job. This is a tough job. Well, I mean, obviously, there's no question it's a tough job. I mean, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I, I guess the, uh, you know, the, the, the right analogy would be, you know, I knew the job was dangerous before I took it. And, uh, and so there's no question about that, but, uh, but, but you know, it, it's it's no different in 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 many many ways than 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 what I've done all my life, and uh, I don't find it terribly difficult or stressful, and uh, you know, and and you know, we just got to get the job done. Okay, well, let's get to this. And one of the proposals you made in the state of the state address, uh, which now uh, your Commerce Secretary Woody Thrasher has been talking about, you're talking about, you put out a video on it. Uh, yesterday, which we retweeted, is for this SOS, the Save Our State plan, where you would take $105 million and use it to try to create economic development in the state. I don't think there's a lot of understanding about that yet, so please explain it. Well, Hoppy, basically through the whole approach, and, and, and it's very difficult to explain in just a matter of just a few minutes. But Well, just, take your time. Be, take your time. We're I'll, listening. Take your time. I'll do the very best I can, you know, but but the, the whole approach is just this. I mean, we have reached a point in time where, and, and, and people just don't get this, but, but they need to. We're, we're approaching the China syndrome. I mean, to where there is, if we continue to constrict, there will be a point of no return, and meaning that more people will leave, revenues will go down even more, there'll be an, another hole in the bucket, yeah, and, and then where are you going to take that? Then you can stick more, more people leave, more revenues go down. And, and I am trying every way within me. The last thing in the world I want people to think is I'm trying to raise their taxes. I'm trying to save our state and lower their taxes. I mean, and if they don't get that, then they just don't understand. But, but the net net of the whole thing is through all these things, I want to build in to where we just don't attack this one way, and that one way is we've got to balance the budget. You know, if we just balance the budget, that's all we do, and we don't have any forward thinking beyond that, the net net of where we're going to go is where we've been. And people got to realize, and I don't say this in a, in a negative way, but I didn't create this mess. You know, I came into the party now – and I'm trying to fix the mess. We've had years to fix this mess, and all we've done is kick the can down the road. And now we've got ourselves on the brink with our rainy day fund being so low that we can't go any lower or we're going to just destroy ourselves with our bombs. You know, where are we going to turn? You know, and so the net net of the whole thing is I'm trying to build in excess dollars to where we can aggressively go out and lure people to come here through either tourism, through the development of infrastructure, through develop, the development of a, of, a, of a specific commercial site, whatever it may be. And I have selected a guy that I think is a superstar in to head up that cabinet of commerce and everything, and that's Woody Thrasher. Mm-hmm. So give me, at, right at the tail end there, I think we got a little bit better idea, but give me, and I see where you're going with this, but give me, a, a few more details, if you can, as to how this fund would be used. Even if it's hypothetical, let's say that the legislature approves it and you have $105 million at your disposal and you're trying to recruit businesses to West Virginia or get business to, to expand. Give me a hypothetical, then, of how this fund might be used. Well, the hypothetical is just this. I mean, first of all, it doesn't have to all be spent in one year, you know, but, but the hypothetical is, and in fact, if there's not if there's not real projects that come our way that 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 have that that are are there to that we need to incentivize someone to come here through that we will develop and we'll pay for the development of a particular site or that there is additional tourism dollars that we want to put out there to be able to market our state and bring more people to our state in a better way i mean these are dollars that are going to be 
at the disposal of the Commerce Department in order to bring and entice and create more and more economic development within our state. You see, Abby, whether we, whether we believe it or not, we market our state so poorly it is unbelievable. And we've got to some way, I mean, there may be, there may be a small piece of the link of the chain as far as an infrastructure piece that, that is, in, is, is within a particular city or whatever it may be that would turn the key to be able to bring all kinds of potential economic development to that area. And we have no money to be able to do it. And this money monies could be channeled in that way to be able to help in that way too. Jim, is this under the philosophy of that, that from your years in the private sector you've got to spend money to make money? Well, I mean, I had a question the other day, you know, for, you know, I was, I had the opportunity to speak, you know, to the, to the house, you know, uh, on the Republican house. And I had, you know, a beautiful lady asked me, said, you know, when you first took over the green bar and everything, you know, you, we saw the things that you did, you cut out this, cut out this and cut out this. And therefore then the green bar is prospering. And that's not what I did. You know, the first thing that I did was I, I got the people on my side, you know, I, I gave the benefits back to the workers and the employees and everything. And the next thing I did is I had to spend some money, didn't I, you know, to to build a casino and build restaurants and bring the golf tournament here and all that kind of stuff. And before you know it, you know, we were off and running. And then what happened was we increased the employment, increased the employment substantially. I mean, we increased the, the managers by 25%. We increased the, the, the number of employees for very, very dramatically in excess of that. And all of a sudden now we turned, we turned an entity that was losing between, you know, 28 to $35 million a year for 700 years in a row. We turned that entity into a $20 million a year profit and on its way to making substantially more than that. And we did that with more people. And we did that in West Virginia, and we did that with ideas and creativity and everything else. The net net of this whole thing is just this, Hoppy, is, is if we don't find a way, if what we do now, I mean, and people just got to get this. This is philosophy. This is just not math. The philosophy is really simple. The patient's heart rate today is 20. If you lower the patient's heart rate to 5, the patient will never, ever get up out of the bed. Governor Jim Justice is with us, and we're talking about this SOS fund, which would use uh, $105 million of tax revenue in the Commerce Department to try to generate new business in West Virginia. Governor, I, I, what you're saying also is you're saying, trust me, I know what I'm doing. I mean, I think, I think that's, what, in essence, what you're saying. One of the issues with that is historically the government has been really bad at picking economic winners and losers, and politics come into play or bad decisions are made. So it, it, you, you do understand that people would, would look somewhat askance at this when they say, you know, we historically are not real good at picking economic winners and losers. The government isn't. Well, first of all, Hoppy, I'm not historically. And, and the next thing is, I am not political. You know, I am not going to pick things based on political in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And the last thing is, we've proven how to be dead last, haven't we? I mean, we got that down pat. And we best better do something. Now, I am also going to, I, 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 and this is so important, and I ne really need to tell you this, is if you, and, and this isn't a trust me deal. I mean, this is just this simple, and this part is math. If we raise our sales tax by a half a penny, and we raise, and we put a two tenths of a percent commercial activities tax on our businesses, think how fast. And this this won't take long, but just think how fast this can change. We that's on the left side. Over on the right hand side, we have a situation where we need ten cents a gallon on gasoline tax, and we need to change our DMV fees from thirty to fifty eight dollars. And then everybody travels on all of our toll roads, no matter what we toll, for free. We don't, West Virginians don't pay any tolls anymore. You know, but that's over on the right-hand side. The second that you left these road jobs, do you realize it's $2.4 billion of work? 
that turns into 48,000 jobs. Now, just stay with me just a second. Right. 48,000 new jobs in West Virginia. The second you do that, you can take the payroll tax on that 48,000 new jobs and sunset the half a penny in sales tax and the business commercial tax of two-tenths of a percent and get rid of it. And then you're on your way to getting rid of our state income tax. The net net, for, for somebody to suggest that justice is trying to raise our taxes is ludicrous. You know, I am trying to do just dead the opposite. Governor Jim Justice is with us. On this road issue, what do you think of this? Because, I, 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 as I wrote this week, you, you obviously proposed a big plan for badly needed road repairs. And you deserve credit for that because we are languishing with our roads and bridges. There's a new report coming out today. What, what if you pull all this thing together and say, we want to increase the gas tax 10 cents, we want to raise the DMV fees, we're going to you know, raise the total dollar... Uh, but but put it all in in a bond issue before the voters. So before you do any of that, you get the voters to approve it. So then they have a say. I think I think it'd be a lot more palatable, certainly to the Republican majorities, if you say, "Here's a big plan," and if voters are fine with it, I'm going to convince them it's a good thing. Then we're okay. What do you think about going to the voters with the whole thing and a big bond issue? I'll be, I, I, you know, just to tell it like it is. You know, I would be I would be for going to the voters with anything and everything. You know, I, I am, a, I'm a real believer that if the people truly understand, but, but the, the $64 question is just this, is what do we do? What do we do if we don't do anything? You know, what do we do if we, if we stay where we're at, you know, and, and stay where we're at is not an option because you got a $500 million deficit. You got, just think about this, Hoppy. You know, when I, you know, when I was on the campaign trail, I truly thought, I truly thought in my heart, you know, there'll be so much waste out there that we'll be able to do this without any tax increases. We'll be able to do this no problem. Do 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 today. Well, as soon as you get there, you find out. You you, you look under the sheets and you say, say uh oh, you know, all the easy stuff's gone. You know, and not only is all the easy stuff gone, but but the very thing you thought for sure was we were at least stable through 2017 because that was done in the past as well. And you find out, no, no, that isn't right either. We're going to be $125 million upside down right now. So where's that money going to come from? Well, that's got to come out of rainy day. Well, now all of a sudden the next thing that happens is your rate holders and all the people that are telling you, uh, you know, that hold our bonds and all that kind of stuff, they're going to come back and they're going to say, if you take another dime out of rainy day, you know, we're going to have to derate you and, and your, the cost of your bonds is going to go straight through the roof. So, so now that's where you're at. And you still got a $500 million hole in the bucket and you've got a $700 million hole in the bucket in 19. So at that point in time, the only place then you can go, now you go into la-la land to where you are constricting our state to where it will never, never recover. What are you going to do? Well, I, under do? I, I, I understand the predicament we're in. I also understand the, 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 the political reality of this. And you have Republican majorities in the House and Senate are far more inclined, they say, to cut the budget and increase taxes. What if we split the baby here, Governor, and say, okay, we get it. There's going to have to be some revenue increases. Maybe we can get that $105 million SOS fund. Uh, but also we have to find substantial cuts, and you can probably find and allow the Republicans to find $200 million in cuts without closing universities and colleges. Can we find a middle ground here? Look, Abby, I would welcome in every way, I would welcome a dialogue of reasonableness to find anything. And, and I will I will be as open minded as a human being can be. The only thing I don't want to do is I don't want to I I don't want to turn our back on our vets, turn our back on our seniors. If we can find reasonable waste and cuts, I'm all for getting rid of it. I mean, the testimony to that is what I'm doing in education. I mean, for God's sake, for living, we've got layers of bureaucrats on top of layers. We don't need that. 
you know, and and we need we we need. I mean, you know, the the two percent you know pay increase that I proposed for our classroom teachers. I mean, we can get that in what we're going to save in testing our kids t totally to death and getting rid of some of these bureaucratic layer, layer, layers, and getting some control back to the local level where the people that really know what to do can can do it. So so I am absolutely all for getting, I mean, you know, you, you can't run businesses like I've done and everything and, and let them be wasteful and create $400 commode seats. You can't do that. I am for cutting any level of waste that I can we can possibly cut, but I am not for crippling our state into oblivion. Governor Jim Justice. Governor, you're always welcome. It's good to have you on, and we'll be in touch. Thank you for your time, sir. Bobby, you're great. Thank you, man. Bye-bye. All right. We'll be right back.